The next piece of the car that needs worked on is the transmission tunnel. In this frame, the tunnel, the transmission tunnel is a structural member of the car, so it's you can't just use a piece of sheet metal. It has to be framed in with tubing, and it basically ties the top half of the chassis together. From the P-bar, it will kind of come in and taper down to the shifter level location, and then from there, it'll come back and tie into these bars. I'm gonna make my tunnel pretty close to the drive shaft, probably an inch of clearance either side, and that should allow me to use these factory Miata seats. My thought is that I'm gonna run a parallel bar, parallel to the floor and to the top of the chassis, uh, back to this bar that I installed, and then a set of tapered bars that run up. So it should be pretty straightforward. For work on the transmission tunnel, I did these uprights the other day, um, and I basically put them at a level that's about even with where I would expect the finish of the uh, transmission shift to be. So that's how I picked the location for that. And then in the back, these have a slight taper in and a slight taper down and then there's a quarter inch plate that's going to tie into these two back bars so with the transmission tunnel in here you get a better idea of kind of how the how tight the cockpit is my arms basically laying almost over the other side of the transmission tunnel the drive shaft tunnel and this arm is outside the car pretty excited you know basically put the engine in this kind of mock the engine in last weekend and then this weekend the motor mounts are done the transmission tunnels you know pretty much the main part of it's mocked in i have to put the lower bars in and some of the stiffening bars but overall it's you know it's kind of coming together pretty fast because i have most of the components that i need i have the upper drive shaft uh tunnel rails in i need to put the lowers in and basically they need to be directly below the upper bars and the way i'm going to do that is just by utilizing a 90 degree square where the edge of that is gonna be. So that bar will run from the back all the way across here and it'll be right under this vertical in the front. So I know that location. One of the nice things about fabricating with square tube is if you can get the tube lined up where you want it, you can very easily just take one of these scratch alls and scratch the angle onto the tube. So once you scratch that, you can cut it and it's basically gonna be perfect length and it'll just slide right into place. Um, fabricating with square tube is much easier than fabricating with round tube. So here's the tube. It's a little long, so I'm just gonna use this flap disc. So the thing here is this flap disc is 60 grit. So these come in different grits. So when you're kind of trimming the length of a tube down, you want a 60 or 40. It makes it work more like a grinding wheel than a, than a flap. These two lower bars down there sitting on the ground getting ready, get, waiting to get tacked in. And then the next bars I need to build are the ones that run basically from the seat bar all the way up to the front bulkhead. Line it up under where I want it to go. Use a scratch all. So on that scratch all mark, you can see it, but there's actually two lines. One line is when you keep the all flat against the surface, and the other is if you kind of push it down in the corner and scratching it, you know, kind of flat versus having it out like that, where it's gonna kind of not be in the plane of this. It's hard to explain. I just gotta know that I cut the shorter one. Same thing on the other side. So I'm getting ready to weld in all these lower rails, but I wanted to uh, kind of demonstrate something about this chassis. So it's basically the, like the main outer rails of this chassis. And then after that's done, you have to go through and put a bunch of diagonal stiffeners and the floor in. But I'm gonna stand on the back of the cha chassis and jump on it a little bit. And I want you to watch that, that tube right there. Watch this tube. So hopefully you can see that tube and I'm bouncing my weight on it 
and that tube is flexing probably an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more. And that's because the, the, the chassis here has a lot of additional stiffening structure that you have to put into it. It's not just the main frame. There's center tunnel in this. It becomes part of the, the chassis. So, so let's put in six bars and see how it changes how that tube flexes when I put my weight on it. See how much it moves with those bottom cross members in. It's not moving at all. It's not moving at all. Real life example of how that chassis design works. You know, you, you stress the chassis in a certain way, you see what moves, and then if something moves apart or together, you control that dimension and that rigid, you know, makes the chassis more rigid.